Here's Game 7 tonight. Tom Verducci, part of that. Also at Sports Illustrated and MLB Network back here on the show. It's awesome, Tom. This has been incredible. What's it been like from your seat? Thrilling. I mean, really, that's what comes to mind. The fact that, you know, we've had all kinds of games, probably the craziest game ever in the series in Game 5. We've had some well-pitched games. But the fact is, you look at the course of this series, 57 innings we've seen. At the end of 54 of them, they've been separated by no more than three runs. It's incredible. So what does that mean? It means really every pitch. It sounds like a cliche, but in this case, it's literally true. There were every pitch, uh, something's riding on it. And that, that, that to me has been exhausting and thrilling. Well, let's get, let's, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into this before we get into tonight's game and what we've already seen, uh, Tom, because last year, uh, I think if I asked you in a, in a private moment, same with Joe Fox executives, how much, be- how could it get better than the Cubs breaking their jinx? And, and then against an Indians team that was trying to do the same in a seventh game that went to extra innings with a rain delay and all that stuff and, and home runs by both teams, right? How can it get any better? And then this one, it feels like it's topping it. It really does. There's no question about it. And I'm wondering why. Why do you think this series has been so entertaining and so good? Well, I think it's the kind of a series that appeals to a casual baseball fan. I wouldn't say it's a classic kind of series, but what we're seeing here is a lot of home runs, a lot of back and forth. Um, a lot of emotions, especially on the Astros side, but you, you've seen a lot from the Dodgers as well. So I think for a fan who doesn't have rooting interest in the game, you're kind of locked in. You know, you you know, fall into this wave and you're just wide riding it. Whereas last year, the narrative before the series started already had people locked in. You know, can the Cubs win? Can the Indians win? And the history of those narratives, I, I think, carried everybody through. The games were great. Game seven was fantastic. But in this case, I think there wasn't, you know, obviously the Astros don't have a national profile the Cubs had, but they haven't won in their history. You have the Dodgers haven't won since 88. But the games themselves have pulled people in. If I'm correct, I think the ratings for the series have gone up with every successive game. That doesn't happen all the time. And that tells you people are getting on board because of the baseball being played. Yeah, and so uh, what about the baseball itself? Your reporting on this has been stellar uh, in its own right. I love that article that you wrote where you had Brett Strom, the uh, uh, the the pitching coach, the Astros, hold a baseball from the regular season in the World Series in your hand. Our, our audio executive, as he likes to be known here, Mike Del Tufo, caught a foul ball in game two of the World Series. He brought in, and I felt it felt like a cue ball, Tom. So what what, what do you think that has had anything to do with this World Series? Well, there's no doubt it's had a big effect on the World Series. I mean, uh, Darvish pitching tonight for the Dodgers, the last time he started, of course, he was out before the second inning ended, uh, did not get a single swing and miss on his slider for the first time in his uh, first time this year. You saw the way Kershaw got only one swing and miss, had no slider whatsoever. Um, Verlander last night kind of went away with slider. In fact, the ball he hit uh, Chase Utley with, he said he really overcooked it. He yanked it because he's afraid of, of hanging a slider, which he did to Peterson in uh, in game two, and he did to Seager, who almost hit it out last night. So it's had an effect on the game. I can tell you this, that Darvish, in his bullpen session before this game tonight, made sure he warmed up, had a session with the World Series ball because it's so different. Um, so listen, we know for the last two years and two months that the baseball is livelier. It's flying out of the park. It's a home run series. It's been a home run year. But I think the fact that these baseballs have been slick and you can ask virtually every pitcher who's pitching the series will tell you the same thing. I think it's added to the fact that, you know, it's tough to pitch with this baseball in this environment. I imagine tonight we'll see more home runs, even in game seven. So how does something like this happen, Tom? It's a great question. I don't think anything has been done deviously with the baseball. Um, as far as the World Series, the slickness of the ball, uh, I've talked to some people in MLB, and they're confused. <laughs> I mean, you have to at least respect the opinion of these professional pitchers who have a baseball in their hand all the time, and they can put them behind their back, a regular season ball and a World Series ball, and tell you which is which without looking at them. So something's up. Um, generally, these, these balls get made in batches, and, and the World Series ball could be made in a batch, you know, months ago, you know, even before the season. You know, just because they're using them now doesn't mean they were made last week. 
So was there something about the batch of baseball when it was made? Was there something about how the baseballs were stored? Was there something about the way the balls were rubbed up with the mud? I don't know the answer, and I don't think anybody got there in the lab and said, ha-ha, let's make these baseballs flicker. Uh, But I think the pitchers, and I've heard many of them tell me this, they want to know why because they can't figure out. Tom Verducci, uh, uh, who will be on tonight's uh, Fox broadcast and also MLB MLB Network and SI.com joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, so um, I'm assuming everybody's up tonight. Does that include even maybe Verlander, Tom? Well, no, and Justin, I'm sure he'll go to A.J. Hinch and say, hey, I'm going to have my spikes on, go to the bullpen. I can get somebody out. Um, I, I don't think A.J. Hinch is going to use him. I think that's a, probably too big of an ask. You know, his heart would be in it, but really as a manager, you have to say, what am I truly getting, uh, Justin Verlander, on no days of rest? But, yeah, I, I think everybody else is available here. Um, the interesting thing to me in this game tonight, Rich, and certainly you're going to see at some point Kershaw and Keiko you know, from both sides getting this game. Yeah, does this game go through Clayton Kershaw? And given the trouble he had, you know, in the game in Houston where he had a four-run lead and a three-run lead, back-to-back getting lost them both, um, you know, how much of this game will be dependent on what he does? And when do you use him? Does he set up? Kenley Jansen, do you hold him back in case you get Kenley in early again in the eighth inning and you need Kershaw behind him the way it happened in the NLDS last year in Washington when Clayton closed that one out? Uh, I just got a feeling he is going to be a major player in this game, and when Dave Roberts chooses to push that button will be really fascinating. Well, the best part about that, too, for the Dodgers' perspective, is Jansen only pitched 19 pitches in game six. Oh. I mean, he really mowed him down. He was great. You know, a little bit like Mariano with that cutter, but also because of his efficiency. He doesn't walk people. He walks seven batters the entire season. He goes right after people. You know, he said after the game last night, I'm good for nine. And somebody said, were you talking about outs or innings? He said, <laughs> whatever, I'm ready. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if the Dodgers have a lead and he does get the ball to start the eighth inning. Well, if that happens, you know, okay, at some point, Altuve step into the plate. That guy is unbelievable. I, I even asked Russell Wilson about him yesterday when I had Russell on the show just because I wanted to get his perspective on somebody who is so dynamic and so d- doesn't look l- the part uh, uh, of a big, burly MVP, right? I mean, he's unbelievable with Springer and Bregman and all of these kids. I think that's another reason why this series has been so terrific is there's young names that are coming to the fore and killing it in the no stage. No doubt time. about that. I mean, I think people dig that when they're discovering these young players, some of them on the big stage for the first time. I mean, you got the cleanup hitter for the Dodgers is 22. The cleanup hitter for the Astros is 23. Uh, you're looking at Alex Bregman, who, I, you know, I can't take my eyes off of his at-bats. You know, he struck out only once this postseason, and everything is a war with him between him and the pitcher. You mentioned Altuve. He may be one of my favorite players to watch play, whether he's on the bases, on defense, at bat. Uh, you can see you're getting maximum effort. I, I love what the hitting coach, by the way, Dave Hudgens, said about Altuve. It looks sometimes like he can will himself to get a hit. I mean, you can see the persistence in his eyes and his body language. Now, the Dodgers have pitched him great. Um, they've kind of shackled him, at least in the games here at Dodger Stadium. So I think for the Astros to win, they do need their MVP to get something going. I, I really think because of his energy, they follow his lead a lot. The Dodgers have done a nice job kind of uh, keeping him down here at Dodger Stadium. All right, before we send Tom off to work, Brockman, ask him the poll question here uh, on today's uh, app, Apple App Store, Google Play. Hit the uh, Rich Eisen Show uh, link on the Twitter handle to get it to vote on the question. All right, Tom, what style of game do you want to see tonight in Game 7? Pitchers duel like Game 6, shootout like Game 5. Uh, I want to see a shootout, and I would call it a manager's game. That's what I love about Game 7, right? Uh, Game 5 was an unbelievable player's game, offensive game, and last night more of a pitching game. This game is going to be manager. This is a second-guest city for everybody uh, with so many pitchers available. All the rules of engagement go out the window in Game 6. So when to use people, when to pull people, when to bunt, all this stuff. Oh, it's great. Nothing better. I think there's nothing better in sports in game seven. I mean, we played about 2,500 baseball games this year in the major leagues, and you got one left. 
That's it. Everything on one game. Well, enjoy it, Tom. Again, you've been awesome. Everybody on Fox, the crew has been great. The shots, uh, the slow-mo shots, the replays have been awesome, and you've been part of it. Thanks for calling in, Tom. We'll chat soon. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for having me. You got it. That's Tom Verducci. For more Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Rich Eisen Show app.